Next Chapter Podcast presents the Play On Podcast series, Coriolanus, Episode 5, Anger's My Meat. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. Don't forget to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Let the gods destroy them. Come now, stop your crying. A brief farewell. The beast of many heads butts me away. May the plague haunt their homes. No, mother. Where is your long-held courage? Oh, me. You used to say suffering tests the spirit that common chances common men could bear. That when the sea is calm, it's every boat can float masterfully. When fortune strikes its hardest blows, bearing it requires a noble skill. You were used to fill me with these principles enough to make the heart that memorized them invincible. Oh, heavens! Oh, heavens! Oh, please, woman! I, too, am moved. Allow your wife her tears. Let disease plague all the Roman tradesmen in red. And after, let all comers die. What, what, what? I will be mourned when I am missed. No, mother. Regain that spirit you had when you'd say if you had been the wife of Hercules. Six of his labors you would do and would have saved your husband twice the sweat. Coriolanus. Cominius, don't wilt. Adieu. Farewell, my wife, my mother. I'll be fine still. You... Old and true, Menenius, you cry more salty tears than a young man. That makes for sore eyes. Cominius, I have seen you grim, and you have witnessed many heart-hardening spectacles. Tell these sad women it's as foolish to wail over the inevitable than to laugh at them. (laughs) My mother, you know well my risks always have given you comfort, and not lightly, though I go alone, like a lonely dragon whose swamp is more feared and talked of than seen, your son will either exceed the common or be caught with treacherous baits and tricks. My dear son, where will you go? Travel with good Cominius for a while. Chart a more promising path than wildly exposing yourself to each danger that will spring before you. Oh, the gods! I'll accompany you a month plan with you where to rest and can communicate so we know of each other's whereabouts. Then, if a repeal should come, we won't have to search across the vast world to find just one man and lose dwindling chance while we wait for your return. No. Farewell. You have many years behind you and you have filled too much with war's wounds to go roaming with someone still unbruised. Just bring me to the gate. Come, my sweet wife, my dear mother, and my friends of proven nobility. When I go, say farewell and smile. Please, now, as long as I'm above the ground, you'll hear from me. And if you do, trust, I will be just as I always was. That's as good to the ear as any to hear. Come, let's not weep. If I could shake away just seven years from these old arms and legs, by the good gods, I'd be with you every step. (laughs) Come, mother, and come, my quiet grace, your hands. that we've gained power. Let's appear more humble now it's done than when we were getting it done. Oh, gods. Here comes his mother. Let's not meet her. Why? They say she's beside herself. Oh! They've spotted us. Continue on our way. Oh, here we are met. 
May the gods repay your love with a fat plague. Calm, calm, quiet. If I could stop weeping. <laughs> Were you slyer than the fox to banish the man who struck more blows for Rome than your spoken words? Oh, blessed heavens. More noble blows than you ever could think wise words, and for Rome's good, too. I'll tell you what. Go! No, stay after all. I wish my son were in the desert, your lot before him, his sword in his hand. What then? What then? He'd bring an end to you and your descendants. Bastards and all. A good man and all those wounds he bears for Rome. Come, come, calm now. I wish he'd remained wed to his country as he started and didn't untie himself from the noble knot he made. I wish he had. Ha! I wish he had! You are the one who inflamed those common cats who can judge his great worth as well as I can judge the mysteries of heaven unknown on earth. Sicinius, let's go now. No, please, sir, go away. You have done bold deeds. Before you go, hear this. As towering as the capital is over the lowest house in Rome, as my son, whom you banished, towers over you all. Well, well, we'll leave you. Why stay to be bothered by one who lacks her wits? Take my prayers with you! I wish the gods had nothing else to do but to enact my curses! Oh, could I meet them just once a day? It would unclog my heart of its heaviness. You sent them off, and I judge with great cause. Will you eat with me? Anger's my meat. I dine upon myself, and so will starve with feeding. Come. Let's go, girl. Seize this whining and lamenting I'm doing like Juno's anger. Come. Come, come. Here, let me help you. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I know you well, sir, and you know me. Your name, I think, is Adrian? It is so, sir. Truly, I have forgotten yours. I am a Roman, but my services are, as you are, against them. <gasps> you know me now? Nicanor, no? <laughs> that is me, sir. You had more of a beard when I last saw you, <laughs> but your features come across when you speak in your distinct voice. What's the news in Rome? I have instructions from the Volscian state to find you there. You have saved me a day's journey. There have been some strange insurrections in Rome. The people against the senators, patricians, and nobles. There has been? Is it over, then? Our state doesn't think so. They are in warlike preparedness and are ready to seize on them in the heat of this chaos. The main blaze of it is embers, but a small thing would make it flame again. The nobles have taken this banishing of noble Coriolanus to heart. They'd be well primed to take away all power from the people and to remove their tribunes forever. This possibility is glowing, I can tell you, and is near to burst for a violent eruption. Coriolanus banished? Banished, sir. You will be welcome with this information, Nicanor. The time is right for Volscians now. I've heard it said the ripest time to corrupt a man's wife is when she's fallen out with her husband. Uh. <laughs> Your noble Tullus Aphidius will come off well in these wars, with his great foe Coriolanus being persona non grata in his own country. He is bound to. 
I am very fortunate to have happened upon you. You've done my work for me, and I will happily accompany you home. Well, let us go together. A good city is this Antium. Oh, city. I'm the one that's made you widows. Many heirs of these gentle buildings I've heard groan and drop facing my attacks. So don't know me now. Else wives with meat cures and boys with stones slay me in puny battles. God save you! And you? Direct me, if you would, please, sir, to where great Ophidius is. He's in Antium? <laughs> he is, hosting a feast for state nobles at his house tonight. Which is his house, if you would? <laughs> this right before you. Thank you, sir. Uh, farewell. Mm-hmm. All to your slippery turns. Fast sworn friends, now, whose separate chests seem to hold one heart, whose time, whose sleep, whose food and working, always together, twins, really, in love, inseparable, will within an hour, over dispute of a pittance, break out as bitter enemies, such deadly foes, whose passions and plots have broken their sleep to take one of the other by some chance, some trick not worth an egg will suddenly grow to dear friends and enjoy themselves. For me, my birthplace I hate. My loves for this enemy town. I'll enter. If he slay me, he does fair justice. If he accepts my way, I'll do his country service. is here. I think our fellow servants are asleep. Huh. A lovely house. The feast smells nice, but I do not seem like a guest. What would you need, friend? Where are you from? This is no place for you. Please go. I'd have earned no better reception in being Coriolanus. Huh? Uh, where are you from, sir? Does the gatekeeper have eyes in his head to let you in with such fine company? Please, get out! Go away. Away? Get you away. Now you're being troublesome. <gasps> Are you so brave? I'll have you spoken to soon. How oh, a strange one as I've ever seen. I can't get him out the house. Please, hey, call my master in for him. I will. What are you doing here, fellow? Please just leave the house. Let me just stand here. I will not hurt your hearth. What are you? What, you won't go? Tell my master he has a very strange guest here. Where is this fellow? Here, sir. I'd have beaten him like a dog, but didn't want to bother your guests inside. Where have you come from? What do you want? Your name? Why won't you speak? Speak, man. Your name. Tullus, if you don't know who I am yet, and seeing me doesn't help you recognize me, I must then announce myself. What is your name? A name unmelodious to Volscian's ears, and a harsh sound to yours. Say it. Your name. You have a grim appearance, and your face has a commander's look. Though your gear is worn, you show yourself a brave ship. What's your name? Prepare your face to frown. You don't know me yet? I do not know you. Your name! My name is Caius Martius, who has done to you especially, and to all the Volskis, great hurt and mischief, as testament to my honored surname, Coriolanus. 
the duties, the dangers, and the drops of blood shed for my thankless country are returned, except for that surname, only that name remains. Now these extreme times have brought me in front of your hearth, not in hope, don't mistake me, to save my life, for if I feared death of all the men in the world, I would avoid you. But instead, for the sheer spite of fully paying back my banishers is why I stand before you here. Now, if you have vengeance in your heart to seek revenge against your own wrongs and end those shames to your country, then step to and make my misery serve your will. So use my vengeful services too and gain benefits to you. For I will fight against my own cancered country with the fire of all hell's devils. But if you choose to dare not to, that you're too tired to try your chances more, then, in a word, I am also weary to live any longer like this. And I present my throat to you and your malice. Oh, Martius. Martius. Every word you have said has weeded from my heart an ancient root of envy. If Jupiter should sound thunder from these clouds and speak divine things and say, It's true, I wouldn't believe them. No more than you, all noble Martius. Let us join arm in arm. Hold your frame, the same that I have met in battle, slashed my blades to hundreds of times, broken against... Here I hug the anvil where my sword has struck. Know this, I loved the maid I married. I state the utter truth. But to see you before me, you noble thing, my heart actually moves more than when I first saw my bride standing in our threshold. Why, you god of war, Mars, you have beat me 12 different times. And I have nightly since then dreamt of encounters between us. We'd be in my dreams, fighting on the ground, unbuckling helmets, choking each other's throat. And I'd wake half dead with nothing. Hmm. Worthy Martius, even if we had no clash with Rome, but that they banished you, we could gather all from age 12 to 70, and then pour war into the bowels of ungrateful Rome and flood it over. Oh, come, go inside and meet our friendly senators who are leaving me now as I was preparing to go against your territories, though not Rome itself. You bless me, gods. So, you most consummate soldier, if you will take the lead in your own revenge, take one half of my command and determine, as you are best experienced, since you know your country's strengths and weaknesses. But come in. Thousand welcomes, and more friend than enemy. Yet, at that you were great. Your hand, welcome. (laughs) That's a strange change of events. (laughs) By my oath, I thought about striking him with a club, and yet something in my mind said his clothes are disguising him. Mm -hmm. What strength he has. He turned me about with his finger and his thumb like someone spins a top. No, I knew from his face there was something in him. Mm -hmm. He had, sir, a kind of face that I thought... uh, I cannot describe it. Mm-hmm, he did. A look like it were. Well, yeah. for the life of me, I thought there was more in him than I could say. So did I. I eh? swear. He is simply the oddest man in the world. I think he is, but a greater soldier than he? <laughs> You'll find none. Who? My master? <laughs> <laughs> oh, devils! I've got news! What? News, you rascals! What? 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 Let's have what? it! Come on! Come on! I would not be a Roman for all the world. No. I'd more gladly be a condemned man. <gasps> Why? 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 He's here! The one that regularly whacks our general. He, Caius Martius. Why do you say whack our general? Yeah. I, oh, I do not say whack 
our general, but he was always strong enough to. Oh, come now. We're fellows and friends. Martius was always better than him. I've heard our general say so himself. Mm -hmm. He was too strong for him directly to speak the truth about it. Outside yeah. Coriolis, oh, he slashed him and gashed him like meat from the fishbone. <laughs> and were he a <laughs> cannibal, he might have <laughs> boiled and eaten him too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but more your news. Yeah. Why, so much has been made of him here as if he were son and heir to Mars, mm -hmm. sitting at the place of honor at the table. No questions asked of him by any of the senators, but they stand, hats off before him. <gasps> Our general himself treats him like his own mistress, no. touches his hand uh, like a sacred oh. relic, and is <laughs> wide-eyed to all he discusses. But the root of the news is... Our general is cut in half from what he was yesterday. Because one half has been offered to this Martius. No. And the whole table approves. Oh. He'll go, he says, and pull the gatekeeper of Rome's gates down by the ears. Oh. He will mow all down before him and leave pillage in his path. Ha. Where, but when does this happen? Tomorrow? Today? Quickly! You will hear the war drum striking this afternoon. It's as if it were a part of their feast, and it's to be done before they wipe their lips. Oh. Why then, we will have a rousing world again. <laughs> this piece does nothing, mm. but rusts iron, multiplies the tailors, and mm. ugh, produces songwriters. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have war, I say. Yeah. It exceeds <laughs> peace as much as day does night. Peace is a feat strolling, distinct, and full of air. It is the very definition of apoplexy, yep. lethargy, yep. fattened, dead, sleepy, insensible, yep. a procreator of more bastard children than was a destroyer of men. Mm -hmm. It is. Oh, oh, they're getting up, they're getting up. Oh, oh, oh go, in, in, okay. in, oh, in. Oh, oh, all right. This is a happier and more pleasant time than when those people ran through the streets here shouting out chaos. Caius Martius was a fine officer in war, but insolent, bloated with pride, ambitious beyond all thought, self-loving. <laughs> and aiming for sole rule and without partners. I do not think so. Worthy tribunes, we have put a felon in prison, and he reports the Volskis with two separate armies have invaded into Roman territories and with the deepest rancor of war are destroying all before them. It's Ophidius. Hearing how we banished Martius, he's thrust his horns back into the world, the ones hidden that dared not peep out when Martius fought for Rome. Now, why this talk of Martius? <sighs> Messenger. Go have this gossip whipped. Mm. It can't be the Volskis dare break peace with us. This cannot be. No, not possible. <sighs> Speak. All the nobles are heading gravely to the Senate House. Some news has come that has turned their faces pale. Worse news is delivered. What could be worse? It has come freely from many mouths. How probable, I do not know. That Martius, joined with Aphidius, leads a power against Rome and vows revenge to attack all alive, from the youngest to the oldest. How likely! <laughs> this is created only so the weak ones would switch to wish Martius back home again. That is their very trick. This is unlikely. He and Aphidius can't reconcile. Not violent opposites. You're asked for by the Senate. A fearless army led by Caius Martius, partnered with Aphidius, rages upon our territories and has already overwhelmed their path, full of fire and took what lay before them. has joined Aphidius. Oh, you have made a mess, Brutus and Sicinius. What news? What news? You helped to ravish your own daughters and to melt the city roofs on your skulls, to see your wives dishonored in your faces. What's the news? What's the news? 
Your temples burned down into their grounds and your platforms on which you stood shrunk into a carpenter's nail head. Please now, the news. Tribunes, you've made fair work, I fear it. Cominius, please, your news. If Martius has now joined with the Vulsians. If? He is their god. <gasps> he leads them like a thing made by some deity beyond nature that shapes men better. And they follow him against us brats, them with the confidence of small boys chasing summer butterflies or butchers killing flies. You all have made this happen. You and your tradesmen. You that stood on the vote of the workers and the voice of lower classes. He'll shake your Rome around your head. As Hercules plucked golden apples. You have made this all. But is this true, sir? <laughs> yes! Your blood will leave you before it's otherwise. All regions are madly revolting, and whoever resists gets mocked for bold ignorance and dies a loyal fool. Who can blame him? Your enemies and his find something in him. We are all done in, unless the brave man has mercy. <laughs> Who will ask for it? The tribunes can't for shame. The people, they deserve his pity, like the wolf deserves the shepherd. Even his best friends, if they pleaded, be good to Rome, they beat asking of him the way those he hates would ask, and then show themselves like enemies. It's true. If he were holding the flame to my house to burn it down, I wouldn't have the gall to say, I beg you, stop. You have made this. You and your henchmen. You crafted all this. You have brought an irremediable quaking in Rome as never felt before. Don't blame us. Yes, don't blame us. How not? Was it us? We loved him, but like beasts and cowards, gave over to the masses who shouted him out the city. Here come the masses. The Play On podcast series, Coriolanus, was translated into modern English verse by Sean San Jose and directed by Kate Wisniewski. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Sound design and engineering by Daniel Benshamon. Mix engineer Larry Walsh. Mix engineer Sadaharu Yagi. Original music composition by Palmer Heffron. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. Senior producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing producer, Robert Cappadona. Coordinating producer, Taylor Bailey. Line producer, Priscilla Villanueva. Casting by the Telsey office, Karen Castle, CSA and Ada Karamani. The cast is as follows. Andrus Nichols as Brutus and others. Cheney Waits as Larcius and others. Ching Valdez Aaron as Volumnia. Denaya Esperanza as Coriolanus. Jamie Ann Romero as Valeria and others. Kim Wan as Ophidius Virgilia and others. Lena Klingerman as citizens and others. Nancy Rodriguez as Sicinius and others. Namuna Cisse as Nicanor, soldiers, citizens, and others. Petrina Murray as Meninius. Vanessa Kai as Cominius. Zoe Tip as Adrian. Young Martius, soldiers, citizens, and others. Additional support was provided by voice and text coach Julie Foe. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. And production dramaturgy by Amrita Ramanan. The senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. 
The Play On Podcast series, Coriolanus, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit ncpodcast.com for more about the Play On Podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at ncpodcast.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. Don't forget to keep your friends close and your enemies closer.